With that, uh, I'd like to call on Dr. Capito uh, uh, to go ahead. He's in uh, Augusta, Georgia. Um, and so uh, he was a non transosseous surgeon that was an anchor surgeon that adopted uh, Tensor. And uh, he's got an interesting tech, uh, perspective from private practice about adoption. Yeah, so th thanks so much, Brett, for having me. Um, I, you know, a couple of things we've already talked about with general tips and tricks and, and whatnot. I mean, we, you know, for, for me, I, I make that lateral cranial portal. It's uh, percutaneous for the medial all placement. I think getting your alls placed well will prevent that suture pull out. Um, and then getting low lateral. So that la lateral portal is slightly more lateral than may maybe most other people will do with their, with their anchor placement to really build that bone bridge. Um, yeah, you go ahead and make my my medial tunnels right away, uh, whether it's one, two, or three, I, you know, I, or, or more. Um, I make sure anesthesia has blood pressure low since you are creating these vents. Um, you know, for for me, if I'm using more than two tunnels, though, I tend to pass um, sutures. I'll make the the medial tunnels at the same point with the all, but I'll I'll create two tunnels at a time passing sutures so I don't have too many sutures in you know if I'm doing a big you know three or four tunnel repair that's just my preference to avoid uh, too much uh, uh, spaghetti in the subcranial space um, and yeah, I typically use three sutures per tunnel um, the bicep tenodesis I actually um, do prior to cup repair I know when I visit you that seemed to be the last thing that you did and then you kind of go back in there and release the biceps I've started just you know, since I've got that opening, um, that window from the subcranial space, the going to joint, I'll go ahead and do the tenodesis low, um, and then just go through the cuff tear and, and, and resect it and debride any remnant of the biceps, and then go to repairing the rotator cuff. And, and for me, that's just been a little bit easier as opposed to trying to get back, you know, within the joint at the, at the end of the case when everything's swollen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, for, for yeah, yes, in this case, is you see the tear there, I go directly down to the biceps, get a hold of the biceps, tenodes, and then, then release it within the joint, and then go back and make my tunnels to repair it. Um, for me, you know, when I first started out, I, I did a, you know, just the medium-sized tear where there's minimal retraction, um, you know, like type one, where it, it seems like a fairly bread and butter type case for anchors, and, and that, was, that was a great starting point for me. I was used to tying knots, which um, is kind of been a big thing for any of my partners uh, being slightly reluctant to, to, to start these cases is that a lot of them don't tie knots. But for me, it was a fairly easy transition and went in with the two peripheral simples and then the Xbox configuration that, that you so well described. Um, you know, and then progressed to the larger tears, three, four tunnel type tears with biceps and adhesis. Um, th this lady, I literally made like just a week before we were doing this presentation. She's three months out. I mean, she was uh, six weeks looks phenomenal. This was actually, the, I finally got my camera out. It was the third patient of the day that came in that was right around that time frame. And it's just so, so much more pleasant talking with these people. I mean, the, the pain threshold is just so much easier. I've yet to refill a pain uh, prescription on any of them. Um, yeah, so when you asked about, you know, incorporation into our ASC, you know, the hardest adoption problem we had was honestly, you know, I'm the new young guy in our practice and everyone's been doing things the same way for a while. And so convincing my surgery center to you know, buy the device and you know, savings kind of sounded too good to be true. Um, but you know, I'd be a little persistent on it and, and, um, having the trial, uh, being able to trial the device for a while and seeing some post-ops a few months out was gave me even more kind of credit to say, hey, this is working really well. This is something I want to, you know, continue using, um, you know, because they were concerned, oh, well, the, you know, you know, sutures pull out or, or whatnot. And, um, you know, are you trying to, you know, fix a problem that you really don't seem to have with patients recovering well from this? So, um, you know, like I said, for me, the, the learning curve has felt fairly short just because I'm used to tying knots, um, which I think is very helpful. You know, how, how would I recommend to other surgeons? You know, debate really is when you talk to me about how there's reduced pain, the earlier full range of motion, patients were happier. Um, the hook was then the science and the biology. I mean, you know, the strength, the natural cuff healing on MRI, the less type two failures, you know, the, getting the increased number of suture fixation points, all those things that we've already talked about, then really kind of hooked me in. And then, you know, to reel me in the rest of the way, you know, being in a private practice, you know, you have to think about your costs. And I mean, if you plan to use more than one anchor, you're saving money. And so for a medium-sized 
tear or if I was going to use four anchors previously and then a biceps anchor, I mean, I'm saving at least $1,500 a case. Um, and, and, you know, being the shoulder specialist in our group, I typically, I don't, I don't really see a lot of just tiny, you know, simple, simple tears. So usually the bigger ones get sent to me or revisions or whatnot. So my, my, uh, uh, anchor usage was, was fairly high compared to some of other partners just for that reason. Um, you know, we talked about, you know, pull out with anchors in the, in the bone tunnels, but you know, or the sutures, but you know, one thing that I ran into was just trying to, you know, get increased the fixation points. You know, when I was first starting, I, I put two tunnels that were too close together you know, and, and so they, they collapsed, but it really was not a big deal at all. And you kind of described that. I mean, the sutures are still there. I could pass them the same way. I had two lateral row, uh, you know, two tunnels from there. It was, it was just the medial tunnel that had kind of was too close together. Um, yeah, that's, that's, we, we learn as we go. Um, post-op pain and rehab, you know, really is, I have the same post-op protocol to keep things consistent. Um, but I do have to hold patients back. They want to do more. They want to do more from the start. I had one patient literally accuse me of not performing surgery on the shoulder because he had no pain. And he said he was doing too well compared to everyone else in physical therapy. Um, you know, I've, I've had to spoken to, I've had to spoken to physical therapists about you know not releasing patients too early. Um, a lot of times they'll come back, you know, and, you know, two and a half months, three months, and and they've been already released well in advance from the therapist. They don't have any more visits. They're not really doing. It. They're just like back to doing all their normal stuff. And and I still you know tell them about the biology how long, you know, it really takes to integrate the tendon into bone because, you know, I don't, I don't think that's going to change necessarily. I think it will integrate better, uh, but I don't think it's going to, you know, timing is timing in our, in our body. So the biggest thing that I've had to do with, with any of my scrub techs is simply just, you know, you know, teach them how to load that passing suture. It's easy. Uh, I did it today with a new scrub tech that just started in the middle of a case. Um, and so this is one of our scrub techs just, yeah, showing us on the camera. I mean, that really is like their only learning curve for this device. I mean, my reps aren't in the room at all. Um, it's just me and one scrub tech doing, doing this case. Um, and so that part is super nice. I don't have, you know, I have my other anchor rep who's, who's always around and open up stuff and whatnot. And this, we don't even need anybody. Um, you know, the other thing with, uh, with, you know, especially in private practice or if you have your surgery center is looking at insurance. Um, and so this is our, uh, breakdown, you know, the last quarter, um, you know, with Medicare and non-implant providing insurances, I mean, you are saving money if you use more than one anchor. Um, I've, I've now, Work Comp has covered Tensor, as well as uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield has recently started covering Tensor. Um, you know, for me, it's just, it's been, you know, wording, I think, and, and then also changes that you all have made, you know, it's a all suture anchor system. You know, I, I describe how many suture anchors I've used. You know, if I pass three sutures through two tunnels, and so six sutures total, I'll say I used, you know, created six suture anchor, um, uh, you know, fixation points within the shoulder. Um, because, that, I mean, that's what it is. It's a suture that then creates an anchor for the tendon back down to the bone. Um, and it's about time that insurance has started, um, you know, accounting for this. And so I think that's made a difference with, with some of our private insurance companies and work comp that, that typically that will cover the implants. Um, and that was the biggest pushback I was getting from my surgery center. Yeah. The, the caveat is, you know, we think that some of these insurance companies may cover hundred percent, but in reality they may cover hundred percent for us, but may, they may only pay 80% that the patient pays the other 20%. Um, so there's all sorts of stuff like that, that they, um, you know, are kind of the fine writing that, you know, we need to be cost conscious of how we are treating our patients and, and doing stuff. Um, and, and this is, you know, um, a huge, huge advantage in that amongst the other advantages that I've already gone through. And so, you know, what do I discuss with patients? Um, you know, when they, when they come to me and they say, Oh, there's so much less pain, I'm doing so much better than, you know, my, my buddy, you know, who's next to me or whatnot. I mean, I, I do, I, I, I will, I, I, give them the credit. You know, I don't want them to feel like, um, you know, I'll, I'll discuss, you know, some have come to me specifically for this technique. I happen to do it on a, you know, one of the, like the head of one of the largest primary care providers in our area. So a lot have come and said, Hey, I want, I want you to do what you did to, you know, so-and-so. Um, but otherwise I, I do, I just compliment them on their pain tolerance. You know, I, I try and give them the credit. I feel like it empowers them to be strong with their recovery and whatnot. 
um, you know, I, I reinforce physical therapists that you know, tendon healing to bone is still tendon healing to bone and time span recovery you know, is the same, even though they are getting, hitting their marker points much, much sooner. I still don't release them out of the gates, you know, until, the, until they're ready. Um, you know, clinic visits, so much more pleasant. I hate being a psychiatrist trying to coax these patients along. It's not why I went into <laughs> to, to medical school. Um, yeah, therapists, you know, have reached out to me, you know, pain improved, motion's easier. They, they enjoy these patients so much more as well. And they're not as afraid of, of, of starting out with the, with some of these patients like they are with most other cuff repairs. Um, yeah, like I said, I, I, I still discuss restricting patients, you know, when they want to do more post-op, I just encourage that they're doing really well to keep up the good work, that their body's doing what it needs to do. It just takes time um, for, for the tendon to really integrate back into the bone. So no, my post-op protocol hasn't really changed all that much. Um, so that's, that's it for me. 